Now let's talk about list making. How can the very physical act of keeping lists help to reduce our cognitive stress levels? I'm going to start by covering the basic use of lists for stress reduction. And then I'm going to cover some helpful hints and tips for the effective use of lists. Now the main idea behind using lists is to take information out of your brain and to put it in a physical place for it to be found and used later. Now this allows you to forget about certain things, freeing up brain power for tasks that need concentration like problem solving and navigating your way around a city. It takes a lot of mental energy to store information and to be able to recall information, especially if it's a lot of information or the information is very detailed and specific uh, and we need to recall it accurately and quickly. Or if the information is very mundane, it takes a lot of mental energy to remember things that aren't super important to us. Now done well, List making can take a load off of your mind and put it in a physical place, freeing up your mind for other tasks. But done poorly, list making can add significantly to your stress. This is why I want to share the following tips for effective list making. I'm going to cover three main areas of effective list making. Number one, how the list is stored. Number two, where the list is stored. And number three, your pattern for checking the list. Now an overarching theme that you're going to see in this is consistency. Across all three areas we need to have consistency in how the list is kept, in where the list is kept, and in our pattern for checking the lists. Okay, if your computer starts running slowly, you have an older computer, um, what do you need to do? You've got too many programs open and running at once, right? The memory, the random access memory is overloaded. So you need to shut down a few programs in order to speed your performance up on the programs that you're actually using. So following these tips that I'm going to give you, using lists effectively will enable you to forget about things, to shut off those programs that you're not using, to uh, turn off those scripts that are running through your mind and using up your brain power that you need to be using uh, for important tasks right here and now. Now this sounds great in theory, but where people run into the challenge is in the actual application of this. List making goes hand in hand with time management, but time management is a subject for another video. For right now, let's just focus on the list making. Number one, consistency in how the information is stored. Consistency in how your list is kept uh, is important for stress management. What if you put your list on the back of an envelope? Uh, that was on the bottom of a stack of papers and, uh, and you're looking for it, you're looking for that information. You may have thrown it away, you don't know where it's at, you can't remember exactly what it looks like. Uh, that just adds to your stress level. So consistency in how you keep your lists is very important to stress management. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter how our list is kept as long as we're consistent with how it's kept. So you may prefer um, digital lists on your computer. This may be Outlook, this may be a, a Google to-do list online, um, this may be just a notepad file that you open up and add to and erase from as needed, or a Word file, or whatever. You may prefer a physical list with a paper and pencil. This could be in a notebook. This may be in a day planner. This may be in a personal journal. This may be a stack of sticky notes on your desk. It could be a pad of paper that you keep um, in your dashboard, in your car, or in your back pocket or it could be on your phone or other mobile device. Or your list may be kept in an audio format. I'm a very auditory thinker. So when a list of tasks comes to mind, it helps if I can just speak it out. I simply pull the recorder out of my uh, briefcase or backpack, hit the record button, and rattle off the list of things I need to do or remember. Now this is kind of a clunky old device, but it works for me. The important thing is to find out what works for you. Um, how do you remember? How do you get your thoughts out the best? What is the most effective, efficient way for you to get that information out of your head and store it in a physical place? And if you're a more visual person, you may want a hard copy of your list that you can look at, glance at quickly. You may also want this information written out somewhere, which is why I'm going to make a web page on list making for all my visual friends out there. Okay, let's talk about the second area. Consistency in the place where the list is kept. And yes, there is a difference. If you keep your list digitally on your computer, make sure you know where to find it. 
Desktops and home pages can get cluttered. You can lose stuff pretty easily. So you need to be consistent in where your list is kept. Now you also need to think about keeping your list online. There are advantages and disadvantages for having your list on the web. Now you may have problems if your machine crashes or if you're way out in the country and there's an ice storm and you lose your power or your data connection. If this is going to be a problem, then you may not want to keep your list online. An advantage of keeping your list online is being able to access it from wherever you have access to the internet, at work, at home, at school, in the library, from your mobile device. So online is a great place to keep your list uh, if your working environment is very stable and your connection to the internet is secure. Or if you're very mobile and you need to keep all your data with you at all times. So the power of the list lies in the consistency of where you keep it. You need to know where to go to get that information when you need to retrieve it. If you prefer to keep a hard copy of your lists, you also need to keep it in a consistent place. If you're keeping your list somewhere around the house, I recommend keeping it out of the bedroom. Okay, The bedroom is your personal sanctuary. That's where you go to relax. You don't want a stressful thing like a to-do list in your bedroom. Good places to keep lists around the house are places like the refrigerator door, the bathroom mirror, uh, the desk by the phone, anywhere you know you'll be where you'll see that list consistently. Now consistency here is the key. If you have a roving list that moves around the house, you may not know where to find it when you need it. Even if your house is not very large or not very cluttered, even if you're a well-organized person, it's still easy to misplace things. I live in a small, neat loft, but I still need to keep my list in a consistent place so I know where it is when I need to see it. If you're going to keep your list on your tape recorder or your, um, or your Palm Pilot or whatever your mobile device is, it's important that you know where that mobile device is. It needs to be in one of two places, either on your person or in your briefcase. On your person or in your car. On your person or on your desk. So the two things we've covered so far are consistency in how the list is kept and consistency in where the list is kept. Now the third thing we're going to hit is consistency in checking the lists. Part of this is having a consistent number of lists. I recommend around three. For a working person, I would recommend something like this. You have a work list, something that you keep um, in your outlook at your workstation. You have a home list, something that uh, deals with your honeydew items and your social calendar. Uh, and you keep that in a specific place in your home. And then you have a third list for random things, like a grocery list or something else. For a student, it may be an academic task list, um, essays that are due, tests that need to be studied for, classes and labs that you need to be at, and then a separate uh, personal and social list. I find that three is about the right number for most people. Any more, and you need to make a list of your lists just to keep track of your list. Now that completely defeats the purpose. Any less, and you end up with this master list that is hugely confusing and distracting when you sit down to do task completion. You don't want your social obligations staring you in the face when you sit down at your workstation. Also, you don't want to wake up on Saturday morning, look at your honeydew list, and see a bunch of stuff uh, that's going to be waiting for you at work on Monday morning. So it's good to keep those things separate and have clearly defined times when you check them. When I'm at work, my work list is front and center. I get off the phone with a client, I pull out the list, and hit the next item, or add an item if something came up during the conversation. Then it's good to be able to set that aside and concentrate on the social, the family, the home things that are important to you when the time comes to concentrate on those things. So let's go through the tips frontwards and then backwards. Okay, first, consistency in how you keep your lists. Second, consistency in where you keep your lists. And third, consistency in the number of lists and when you check them. So you've got a certain number of lists, about three, that you check at certain times during the day or the week. You know where those lists are going to be when you need to see them, and you're going to know how the information is stored, what format it's stored in. So the positive outcomes that I can guarantee from effective list keeping are an amazing feeling of accomplishment every time you cross something off a list, every time you click that delete button, every time you wad up that sheet of paper and throw it away. Start a new one. It creates a sense of accomplishment, of purpose, it keeps you centered, it makes you energized, it adds freshness, newness, purpose, positive momentum in your life. Now you may not want to throw away your completed to-do list. You may want to store those somewhere so that you can go back and look at them and see what you've accomplished over the course of a week or a month or a year. 
You can say, look, this is who I am. This is where I've been. This is what I've been doing. These are the steps I've taken to get to where I'm at now. This helps you to realize that your life is going somewhere, that something is getting done. Helps you feel less like a rat in a cage or a gerbil on one of those exercise wheels going around and around. And probably the greatest positive result you're going to see in effective list keeping is the reduction in stress that you're going to experience. Getting information off of your mind, out of your brain, allows your brain to relax. It frees up brain power for problem solving. When our minds are free from the mundane things, it opens us up to personal growth and progress. Amazing what happens when we take a basic life skill like keeping lists and use it to its fullest potential. Well, that's all for today. I'll catch you next time.